and a good Friday afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you to Somnimed's fifth webinar in our series, Sleep Partners, How the Best Dental Sleep Medicine Partnerships Get It Done. And I want to welcome Dr. Brandon Hedgecock and his full-time employed field sales and marketing rep, Sarah Morris, to the program today. Um, hello to you both. Hi, so glad hey, to be here. Hi there. Um, want to welcome our audience here. I'm Lewis Myers, Director of Sales for Somnimed. This is our fifth in what will be a sixth webinar series. So far, we've had three dentist sleep physician partnerships on so far. Uh, this is our second where we've had a uh, dentist and his um, and his sales rep, another winning uh, partnership, if you will, in the world of dental sleep. And uh, next Wednesday, uh, we will have Stacy Lehman and uh, Lori Ledley on, who is the, the owner uh, of a big time sleep clinic there uh, in Phoenix. And they've been referring back and forth uh, for, for years now. So um, in, this, in this world of COVID-19 and all the DSMO and, and all the, uh, all the uh, webinar overload, we kind of wanted to do something unique and, and spotlight these winning partnerships. And the intent really is just to hopefully leave you with a pearl, a golden nugget to take back to your own practice and implement in some way, utilize in some way in order to drive referrals and drive success so that we can help more, more people. Um, that's really the overarching goal for these, for these webinars. So um, again, thanks so much, Dr. Hedgecock and Sarah for being on today. Um, let's, let's start out uh, and uh, Dr. Hedgecock, if you can just give us a status report of your practice, what, what are y'all doing? Are you back? Did you ever stop? What's the, how's the practice looking in this crazy uh, day and age that we're living through? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lewis, thanks again for having us on. Glad to be here. Glad to share some of what we do and, uh, you know, excited to talk about it. Uh, those who know me know that I never mind uh, talking about myself a little bit. So, <laughs> um, we, uh, you know, it's been interesting. This, this COVID-19 pandemic's really, uh, been been interesting on both sides of it. Our dental practice, you know, I, I still have a dental practice. I still run a dental practice. Uh, still have actually two dental practices, and then we have our sleep business, Sleep Better Austin. And our dental practice was pretty much shut down. We had about a month and a half of um, emergency only treatment, so we had to furlough uh, many of our employees, our hygiene and um, assistants and front desk, and and basically we we were doing a handful of extractions uh, from dentistry, uh, but uh, our sleep business continued to operate throughout the entire uh, pandemic, if you will. And and I think sleep is essential to health and immune function. And in in the way that we read our state, and I know every state had a little bit of a different mandate, but the way that our state's mandate looked, um, we had no problems continuing to see our sleep patients. Uh, we did change a little bit about the way that we saw uh, some of our uh, consults and some of our uh, follow-ups and things like that. If patients were uncomfortable with coming into the practice, we did some more uh, telemedicine type things and phone calls to, to get patients kind of through some of those appointments. Uh, but for the most part, we were still seeing patients. We were still receiving referrals uh, mm -hmm. from our physicians. Um, I will say that we we took a dip. Our referrals probably were about half of what they normally were during this time. And I think that's just because a lot of our physicians kind of shut down too. They were seeing less patients. And I think a lot of patients just weren't going to the doctor for a little while. I think in the very beginning, there was just the, the fear set in and a lot of people just kind of froze. Yeah. Um, and so we, we saw a little bit of a reduction in referrals and in patients coming in, but still, um, you know, we, we never had to completely shut down. So that was a very good thing for us. And we're still opening our, you know, fourth location. So. And, yeah, and, and continue during that time. Our construction was still ongoing for our our newest location. We're we're building a standalone sleep office in Central Austin, and uh, and so you know that's kind of up and ready to go now. Awesome, awesome. So give us a little history, Dr. Hedgecock. How did how did you get started in sleep? When did you fall in love with this whole idea of of helping patients suffering from OSA? How did Tell us a little bit about your journey into this. Yeah, I um, 
2014 uh, was when my sleep journey started. I had a, uh, a family member at the time. My, uh, I was actually my former father-in-law who reached out to me, said, what, you know, what do you know about these appliances for sleep apnea? I said, I don't really know a whole lot about it. Uh, he said, you got to look into it. This thing has just changed my life. Oh, uh, and he was a fairly um, unhealthy individual, uh, was dealing with a lot of medical concerns at the time. And uh, I said, listen, you're, you're my kid's grandpa. You need to be around. So, um, you know, part of getting healthy for him was getting his sleep apnea treated. And he went through the CPAP, failed it, struggled with it, ended up with an appliance. And um, when I saw the difference that it made in his in his life, in terms of healthier, lost weight, more energy off of medications, you know, off of blood pressure medications, off of some of his, uh, you know, other medications, and and just overall, generally a healthier guy. Uh, I said, man, if this can have that kind of an impact. Um, we, we can, we should be looking into this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so started looking around. I went to my first sleep course was with Kent Smith, uh, many, you know, well-known, a very good introduction, came back, fired up, ready to go. Um, and then for two years, I really kind of did what a lot of people do, unfortunately, which is you, you kind of struggle to kind of get it up and running and you're trying to get your team behind you and you're trying to get doctors and you're trying to do you know, the clinical side and, and how do we get patients and how do we get paid and medical insurance and, yeah. you know, all these types of things. And um, in 2016, about two years later, we really kind of hit our turning point. And um, at that time, I, I joined the International Academy of Sleep um, and started really devoting uh, more time to getting out there and, and meeting with physicians and implementing some business strategies in terms of helping physicians screen and test patients and, and meeting more physicians and forming relationships. Um, and I would say that that was kind of the year where we really started to see some growth. And as that started happening towards the end of that year was uh, when all of a sudden I started kind of looking at things and saying, you know, my time's pretty limited. I can only go out. I'm doing 40 hours of dentistry a week. And my goal at the time was to meet one doctor every week. And I look at the city of Austin, Texas, and think about yeah. how many doctors are in Austin. How many doctors are in Austin, Sarah? Oh, God, over 2,000, easy. Yeah, so, you know, if I'm only doing one a week, you know, how am I going to meet them all? Not to mention the fact that when I go into these offices, um, I'm not meeting most of the doctors. I'm meeting the front desk person, and they're they're giving me the runaround, and the doctor's busy, or the doctor can't meet you right now. And and so I was spending a lot of time kind of turning my wheels. And at, at that point, I said, you know, um, I think if I had somebody that could be out there every day, knocking on doors, going into offices, um, it'd be a better use of my time than, than me leaving the dental practice to go out and try and do this. And that's kind of when I brought Sarah on and started to you know, going towards the route of, of having her being more involved with being that person reaching out to offices and setting up meetings and things like that. And, and that's really when we started to see some pretty exponential growth at the time. For sure. Awesome. Sarah, what about you? Where did you come from? And uh, you obviously exhibited something for Dr. Hedgecock to hire you, to put you in this role. Do you, do you have a, a dentistry or a sleep background? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, I don't have a dentistry or a sleep background, but I do have, my father was diagnosed with sleep apnea um, ages ago. And I saw his struggle for the CPAP and to even get diagnosed, I physically had to take him to the sleep lab because he was just refusing to sleep anywhere. It's like every other patient, you know, they don't want to go to a sleep lab. They don't, you know, want to do this. And so I physically took him, dropped him off at the sleep lab, made him spend the night there, picked him up the next day, and then, you know, saw him go from a grumpy um, person, grandfather, falling asleep on the couch, snoring, raising the roof to a happy down on the floor with my kids running around, you know, just a, a better outlook on life even. Mm -hmm. And for that, that for, for that, for me to see that in a person really resonated with me. And when I had the opportunity to, you know, help 
Dr. Hedgecock, I, I, I remember telling you, Dr. Hedgecock, I don't, I don't know if you remember me saying this, but I was like, I won't let you down, you know, in the interview, because I was just like, I wanted the job so bad, but I didn't want to seem super desperate. So I just remember saying, look, if you hire me, I won't let you down. And, you know, the rest is history, in my opinion. Do you have a yeah, sales background? Do what? Do you have a sales background? I do. So I, I'm sorry. So yes, I definitely have a sales background. I'm Sandler trained. I've worked with um, LSO. It's a local shipping company. I've been in sales at least 20 years. Um, and yeah, Sandler definitely changed my whole, um, you know, just my whole sales process. So I, I highly recommend it. So. Dr. Hedgecock, what were you going to say? Sorry. Yeah, no, Sarah had a sales background, but it had nothing to do with medicine, it had yeah, nothing yeah. to do with dentistry, had nothing to do with sleep. I mean, literally, um, we had to teach her. She knew what she knew about her dad and sleep, but we oh, had to teach yeah. her everything about uh, the sleep process and oral appliances and, 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 you know, the research behind it and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, what you find out is, is that good salespeople, um, you can sell anything, sell anything that you give them. It's kind of like that, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio movie. And he's like, sell me this pen, you know? And, and so there's, if you find the right person with the right motivation, you teach them what they need to sell and they can sell it. No doubt. No doubt. You know, we had, we had Dr. Kent Smith and his, and, and Mike Ring, his, his Sarah and his practice on just last week. Mike's got 20, 25 years in the sleep business. He's obviously very successful helping Kent drive his business. Sarah, you don't come from that background at all. And yet, you know, mm -hmm. you're kicking butt for, for sleep better off. So you just got to find I, the right I person. I believe in the treatment and I believe yeah. in the business and I'm very passionate about it. And I know that we help so many people and that's like right in my wheelhouse. So, yeah, I love that. Let's talk a little bit about how, and the how is how have you been successful? What, what key practices um, uh, do you hit up? when you head out there, um, pulmonology, ENT, are you seem to be having better luck with just your general practice, family mm -hmm. practitioners, whatever? Um, so family practice some, but it's going to mostly be for our organic referrals, ENTs, pulmonologists, neurologists, um, who else? Uh, yeah. Some, like uh, cardiologists, internal yeah, medicine. Yeah, cardiologists, sleep doctors. Medicine. Endocrine, yes, um, all of that. But I'll tell you, our our mo is I just I just take Dr. Hedgecock in there and I say, meet the doctor, and they're like, oh my God, we love him, he's so relatable. So that's literally our strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so, from what from what uh, from those specialties that you just mentioned, who's the most difficult? Who presents the biggest pushback? Sleep doctors. Um, they are 100% believers in the gold standard of CPAP. Um, and, you know, we've, we've brought in the data and, you know, we say, look, this is, this is what we've done personally. This is what Dr. Brand has done personally with all of these different patients. Um, and they say, yeah, yeah, um, cool. You know, but we do have a few sleep doctors that do send to us, but I mean, it, it is hard to break through the um the science i guess of cpap i'm actually really excited to to show your your new tool um to some to some sleep docs for sure yeah i think you know sleep physicians um are kind of just born and bred cpap believers and yeah. they it's hard to change their mind about things you know people that get into practice they know what they know and they tend to to believe in that they tend to be a little bit biased by that and you know, it's hard to go in there. And I, I think a lot of times physicians don't really appreciate dentists to begin with. Uh, so there's that bias that you're fighting. Um, mm -hmm. And there's the, the bias of, of competition and politics. And I think yeah. that we, we see that unfortunately in the sleep world. And so the, the, the sleep docs who are into the research, they understand the research. A lot of them are dual trained sometimes. You know, one of our best referring offices is a dual board certified ENT and sleep mm -hmm. physician. Mm -hmm. And so he sees the different modalities. He sees it from a surgical standpoint, from his ENT background. He sees it from a clinical standpoint, from his ability to do a physical exam, 
you know, unlike normal sleep physicians, most sleep physicians aren't looking up the nose, down the back of the throat. Uh, you know, they're, they're very much looking at data from a sleep test when they make their diagnosis and their recommendations, but he sees it from a more clinical aspect and he's For a sure. big believer in oral appliances and we get a lot and of he's patients. younger too. I feel like Dr. Hedgecock, the younger the doctor is, the more they're into new technology and, you know, new ways of doing things. Well, sure. and they might be more up to date with the research as well. Yeah. Um, and and so, you know, what, what we have found is it's hard to change those sleep physicians' minds. But the problem with, with the patient cycle is that patients don't, patients that aren't using their CPAP aren't typically going back to their sleep physician because the sleep physician just continues to tell them to wear their CPAP. So if I'm a patient and I get a CPAP and I don't like it, or I can't wear it, or I'm struggling with it, I go back to the sleep physician that gave it to me, and I say, I can't wear this, I'm struggling with it. And, this, and he says, go back to the DME, try a different mask, mm -hmm. okay? And then, and then you try a different mask, and it doesn't work, and you go back, and then the sleep physician says, go back to the DME, try a different pressure. Then you go back to the DME, then you go back, and, and these patients are going, I mean, the stories that I hear from patients yeah. in terms of the runaround they get from sleep physicians, so eventually... They're like, screw this. I'm not going back to that sleep doctor. Every time I go back to him, he just tells me to try CPAP again or do a different CPAP or do a different mask or do a different hose or do a different this or that. And, and so where I think we catch more of these patients is back at their, maybe not their primary care, but maybe their primary care, maybe their secondary care office, where um, if we can help those physicians understand, hey, there's an alternative. And a lot of them don't know. I mean, right. it's a how many times I talk to a OB-GYN, a primary care doc, a uh, internal medicine doc, an endocrinologist who they don't know there's another option because their answer when a patient comes back and says, I hate the CPAP, I'm not wearing it, is go back and see the sleep doctor. So then again, you, the patient just is lost because it's sad. Nobody, nobody's giving them another option. Right. So if you can catch those physicians where the patients come back, that's where we can we can get that other option out there and and that's where we really focus a lot of our time is yes we're going to make sure we stay in the back of the mind of the sleep physicians for the one or two a month that they're going to send right. but we want those other doctors that see the patient more frequently to know that this is an option know that it works know that it exists know that it's affordable know that we we have an option for them and that's where sarah spends a lot of her time for sure it's educating every yeah. physician i'm in contact with yeah, Sarah, a minute ago, you had mentioned our tool, um, and uh, I just I just want to give just a quick 30-second snapshot on what you meant by that. Yeah. Um, so Somnimed has a new program called the Effectiveness Equation. I took you, Sarah, through this just a couple days ago Amazing. and kind of let you play with it and kind of let you see it. The Effectiveness Equation is basically, um, it's, it's a high-quality professional tool. Uh, to use with physicians to explain uh, the clinical proof behind oral appliance therapy relative to CPAP. Mm -hmm. And it's built upon the premise that effectiveness equals efficacy, but times compliance. And yes, CPAP might be the gold standard, but it's not the gold standard when it comes to compliance. And um, the effectiveness equation is built uh, around all of the existing and published peer-reviewed data out there. Uh, but it just puts it together in this really cool little presentation format. And Sarah's going to have a copy of it to take out to the masses and and, uh, mm -hmm. and give physicians in that greater Austin area an opportunity to perhaps look at these these two treatments in a, in a bit of a different light. At least that's the goal anyway. The yeah. data's not new. There's not, not a lot that's new out there as far as published data, really. It's it's well documented, all this mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, it helps us present it in a, in a new way. I'm excited about so, it. Yeah, you'll have your you'll have access to that. Um, Sarah, you're out banging on doors all day and you're not always with Dr. Hedgecock because he's running a busy dental practice as well. Right. What, what are you finding works for you as far as how to get back, uh, how to get past that gatekeeper? What, what works well? So just obviously 
being very um, not, you know, nice and walking in. If there's like people at the that are like patients, you have to obviously wait your turn, um, you know, and just trying to. The whole point of me going in to these offices is I want to try to set a lunch up, up with them and get in front of the doctor. Okay. Um, so a lot of times I'll just, you know, walk in and say, hey, what, you know, if it's a sleep office, sleep doctor, I'll say, um, you know, my name is Sarah. I'm with Sleep Better Austin. What do you all do with your patients who are non-CPAP compliant? Um, the person at the front desk never knows. You know, they're they're like, oh yeah, we. Um, I'm not sure. We just send them to the DME. The DME handles all of that. Yeah, whatever the answer is, I don't care. I just want to basically get in front of the doctor to let them know that there is another option for treatment if they do have non-compliant CPAP or CPAP patients. And I want to do it in a very non-threatening way. I want to do it as we're just here to help. If you have patients that are struggling, let us help them. And that's that's it. That's all. That's all I say. And then I set up a lunch and or you know a 15-minute conversation or a, you know a webinar at this point, like whatever it takes, um, and get Dr. Brandon or one of our Dr. Kerr or you know Dr. Edmonds in front of that physician just to you know, talk about how we can help their patients because it's got to be frustrating for them too. The, the same patients coming back, you know, not being able to wear their CPAP and they're frustrated and they're like, I came to you for help doc. And like, you know, I, I'm still feeling this way. And so being able to say, okay, we've exhausted all options, you know, with this CPAP, here's what I want you to try to do. Um, the biggest thing that they'll hear from the patient will hear from their doctor, like the, the, the biggest thing that I feel like the physicians have an issue with as far as oral appliances go is the price. So I think it's important that, you know, you, you give options to the patients to be able to pay. Dr. Brandon doesn't mind being the bank, um, you know, pay what you can, you know, every month to us, you know, we're, we're here to help, we're, you know, and saying that in front of patients and, or in front of doctors and also saying that, you know, we take Medicare, it makes us totally look like we really are there to help. We're not just money hungry dentists you know yeah. we're, we're actually here to help so I, I love that dr brandon do, does that well i i think that um you know getting in front of the doctor is is kind of the main point of this and mm -hmm. getting past the gatekeeper for a lot of reps is sometimes a challenge because all the reps that are typically going in are selling something they want the doctor to buy something they want the doctor to use their product they want the you point. know all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff and, and so for us, I think it's a little bit different because our message is a little bit different. It's not, hey, I'm here to sell you something. I'm here to sell your doctor something. I'm here to get your doctor to buy my product or use my service or, you know, anything like that. It really is, you know, hey, we, we have something that can help your patients and we just want to be a resource for you. And also, you know, as Sarah, Sarah is a, a representative for me. And so when she's going, you know, hey, I work with Sleep Better Austin and Dr. Hedgecock and Dr. Hedgecock would really like to meet Dr. Smith or Dr. So-and-so. Mm -hmm. um, how can we make that happen? Can we do a lunch? Can we do a breakfast? Can we do a happy hour? Can we do a dinner? Can we do, you know, can he just come by? You know, some docs don't want to do a lunch. They don't want to do, you know, so it's not always the same. It's, it's right. whatever, whatever it takes to meet that doctor. Uh, and, and we've done... 7 a.m. before they start clinic for yep. five minutes in the hallway. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then we've done Perry Steakhouse at 8.30 at night with whiskey and a great dinner, you know? Um, you know, and then we've done everything in between. Um, and so whatever it takes to meet the doctor. And I think that going in with that kind of uh, mentality helps because we're really not selling anything. We're, we're there to to introduce ourselves and be a resource. But I also think that, you know, the other part of that is that Sarah's not mentioning is yes, we want to get in front of the doctor, but I'll tell you way more important than the doctor is the oh, whole yeah. Yeah. knowing and understanding, you know, cause the doctor oftentimes is like make a referral, but mm -hmm. the person who makes the referral is the nurse or the PA or the medical assistant or the referral coordinator or, you know, those people. So, you know, it's not just like, hey, we go in one time, we meet the doctor, we tell them what we can do. It's, hey, we're, we're going to stop in and we're going to check in on you. We're going to make sure you have business cards. We're going to make sure you have referral pads. We're going to make sure you remember us. We're going to make sure if, if you've got hired a new person that they know about us and we're going to know everybody's name and everybody's face and everybody's dog's name and 
everybody's kid's name and Where are you vacationing this year yeah all that Every stuff because it's a relationship that that we're trying to build it's not just a one-off introduction it's really that relationship that should be ongoing <clears throat> do you offer to put uh the doc and or staff members into treatment all the time oh that's a super yeah. great question lewis yeah we we definitely offer any of the physicians that we come across who you know in, in the midst of our conversation say that they're struggling with cpap um dr brandon absolutely offers them a free appliance yeah of course yeah one of our our top okay. referring uh nurses we treated her husband early on she was a nurse practitioner and uh her husband came in and we made him an appliance at no charge because of the relationship and still she was, about that. yeah she was still happy yeah. with Sweet. with him sleeping better and her sleeping better because he's no longer snoring that you know yeah. all of a sudden she's a believer now and she's sending us you know five patients a month uh because of that so that's always always key that was really a point that got accentuated on webinar number one with uh, with Dr. David Schwartz and 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 uh, Dr. Andrew Mouton was was yeah the, the the sleep docs are really important but the staff is so critically important in this entire process and oftentimes they're overlooked so true. Uh, and, and that needs to stop right That's they are really really important. I when we deliver baskets because typically we do monthly baskets that's who I give them to I, I give mm -hmm. them to the staff you know if there's something special that Dr. Brandon wants to do for a certain doctor obviously that gets delivered straight to him but you know and that's usually Christmas and, and things like that but you know typically I, I take it straight to the nurses and, sure. and to the staff or we just order pizza for everybody and just you know just to thank you for believing in us and you know letting us help your patients question for both of you can 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 you share with us a success story on um you know a good a, a a really good referring physician that initially you were like ain't no way that's ever gonna happen with that dude um and uh, and you were able to successfully bring him or her uh, over to your way of thinking and kind of look at me now look where we've come from does anybody jump into your head I'll tell you, Dr. Slaughter does only because Dr. Brandon, he gave you about two and a half minutes. Uh, when we went in there to um, meet with him, he wanted a certain type of food. So we got him something different than we got everybody else. And he comes in, grabs his little bag, you know, talks to Dr. Brandon for literally two and a half minutes um, and then left. And I was like, oh, all right, well, that, you know, kind of like, wah, wah, wah. But it turns out <laughs> he freaking loves us, like, and sends us patients daily, like, daily. Wow. That comes out for me. You and know, one that maybe isn't, uh, one that maybe isn't as big was, I think, um, Dr. Brown, maybe. Um, mm. You know, Early on, he was he was like a, a onesie twosie kind of a guy. He was like occasionally, every once in a while, we'd get a patient. It'd be normally it would only be the Medicare patients. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't like I don't think he was ever really fully bought in. And we ended up working with him from a different uh, from our other business as well in terms of uh, helping him with a home testing program out of his office. And when we had an employee in his office, we were actually able to run data on all of his patients and their compliance. With and we with CPAP, uh, because he had a lot of patients on CPAP. And when we were able to look up the data and present it to him and say, you know, out of all the patients you put on CPAP in the last year, here's the percentage that are using it more than 70% of the time and it was a low number uh, i'll tell you in his eyes he I had <laughs> yeah in his eyes yeah. he had 90 percent compliance yeah um but when we actually were able to present the data uh, it was like 23 percent compliance yeah. and he at first he was a little upset that that we pulled this data on on his patients and gave it to him but i'll tell you he came around and we had we had a, a pretty good, honest conversation about patients that are kind of left out there. And once he had that data, within a couple of weeks, 
he turned into instead of a, a every once in a while guy, it was a more consistent three to four patients every week guy. So he still mm -hmm. wasn't blowing the doors off or anything, but we we definitely I think changed his mindset a little bit with that information. Now uh, most people won't have access to that data of their doctors, so that's a little bit of a different scenario. But but being able to kind of help and show any type of data can help with some physicians. He, here's a sleep doc who allowed you to mine his database, his, mm -hmm. his patients. If, if only they would all allow us to do that, right? Because yeah. they, they would probably be shocked at what they, what reality is versus what they think is reality. And, you know, even to kind of pick at that scab a little more, how was he defining or even how would how was your how was how were you defining a successful CPAP user? A lot of the literature defines this as four hours of use per night, which we all know is completely ridiculous. Yeah, so that's the number you were using. So that's the number we were using because that's their gold standard is right. yeah. 70 seventy percent four hours a night, seventy percent of the night. So four hours yeah. a night, four nights a week. We all know that's not enough. If they're not using it every night, they're not getting a benefit from it. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the number we used for 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 CPAP, um, and um, you know, but but still, there's that. So many sleep physicians are so caught on AHI that that's all they look at. Yeah. And, and so that's you. You've got to kind of help them get past that. Um, and and we actually put the data together to show well, if they only wore it two hours and they slept eight hours, here's what their AHI was. You know, and that might be what your tool shows. It does. It's exactly okay. what it does. It's really, Perfect. really interesting. Yeah, AHI over eight hours instead of yeah. just looking at uh, the, the, the first four hours of the night. That's precisely right. Sarah, when you and I were on the phone the other day, you had mentioned this big time, this urologist in Austin. That's a really, really good referral source. Mm -hmm. I think that the specialty of urology might get overlooked a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it shouldn't because we all know nocturia, erectile dysfunction, all these things are, are issues associated with OSA. How did, right. how did that ref unique referral source come to be? Well, um, we did the screening program in his office. And so we started screening all of his um, patients to distribute home sleep tests. Um, and as soon as we as soon as we did that, he just had all the all these patients that obviously needed to be treated. Um, and so some go to CPAP and some go to oral appliances. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll touch on that because Sarah, we had that relationship started a little bit before Sarah came on board. Mm -hmm. uh, their main PA who heads up their men's health program it was a patient of ours, a dental patient of ours. Mm -hmm. And my partner, Dr. Kerr, um, uh, was a patient of theirs. Uh, he was being treated for low T and they have a testosterone program and a men's health program where they're looking at ED and low T and all that kind of stuff. And we treated him with an oral appliance. He got tested, uh, Dustin got tested and uh, we made an oral appliance for him. So again, it was like one of those things where he saw it, but what they were seeing prior to really utilizing us and, and uh, looking at sleep apnea was they were seeing a lot of low T patients where they were treating their low T, but they weren't necessarily getting better in terms of symptoms. So if, you know, a lot of patients go in, men, I think I'm, I'm fatigued, I'm tired, I don't have energy, low sex drive, you know, all these yeah. things, uh, it's low T, it's low T, it's low T. Mm -hmm. Well, you start treating their T, you start the injections of the pellets or whatever, you, do, you draw their blood, their testosterone's fine, their testosterone levels are up, but they're still tired. They're still lacking energy. They're still not wait. They're still groggy in the mornings, and it's because they're still not sleeping. Yep. And so when they kind of saw that, they started to see that that this really was a component of successful testosterone therapy was also improving the patient's sleep. And that's yep. where it started. And then from there, it spread to the ED and the nocturia and you know the other things that he sees in his practice as well. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, I just want to point out to the audience real quick, guys, if you have a question, please uh, type it in to the, uh, to the question box on your screen. We do have a couple of awesome questions here that we'll get to um, uh, in just a minute. 
Uh, Sarah, I want to just ask you one more question, kind of when you're getting out there and you're calling on, have you, what do you find works as far as a, a, a powerful leave behind? If, if you're unable, if, if you can't mm -hmm. get back and, and, and see the doc, what works for you? Do you have a pre, do you have a packet already put together? Um, how, how does that work? Because we all know that uh, we all want to leave something behind. My, my sales team certainly wants to leave something behind as well. What works for you? So we have a basically meet the office uh, type of flyer is what I do for our very first, when I very first walk into an office. And it basically just talks about our office, the type of insurances we take, Mm -hmm. um, you know, about the docs and, and things like that. So that's what I leave at the front when I'm, when I first walk in. And then when we have a lunch or we have a meeting, um, I leave our prescription pads as well as what we call rack cards and the rack cards just basically they're patient facing. And so the docs and the, and the staff can just, you know, give a, it's, they're about, I don't know, this big and it, and they just, you know, talk about our office and then the, the nurses or, or whoever can give it straight to the patient. Um, and then you know how big so <laughs> anyway um and then so that's what the uh patients are are given from the uh office that is referring them to us Are you blushing no ew <laughs> you know i'll tell you another leave behind lewis and and this kind of depends on your relationship with some of the manufacturers is Ooh, yeah i know where you're going uh, with this if we can get um demos some demos yep. uh, you know if we have a, a, a pretty decent office and, and it makes me so happy we've got this one uh, cardiology office they got all the the Phillips and ResMed heads with the masks and the, yeah. the CPAP demos right so CPAP demo mask 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 and then right next to it we got teeth and we got sleep better Austin teeth and it's a, a, a an appliance demo mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that one of our reps was able to give us um, right. It doesn't make sense necessarily to to buy and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on tons of demos, yeah. but if you if you can get a few uh, discounted or if some of the companies will uh, get you some, being able to leave that behind so that not only is it a reminder for the staff when they're when they have the patients, but they can show patients, um, which sitting right next to a CPAP. Yes. You know, Look, the little, wait, next, I mean, it just makes a big difference. It sells itself. Yeah, it does yeah. sell itself for sure. at that point. For sure. Yeah. And it also puts the patient at ease because they're thinking like this big clunky uh, right. thing in your mouth. And then they're shown this like sleek little, you know, um, device. And they're like, oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I want. No doubt about it. Yeah. Let's uh, let's uh, go to our little question bank here and see who's, uh, who's typing away. Hi. Uh, uh, Dr. Ella Kofer down there in Florida. How are you? How is he asked? Uh, Justin asked, "How is Sarah communicating with docs who are concerned about COVID and limiting interactions?" Mm, that's a great question. Uh, we're calling a lot. We're wearing masks. Um, I'm finding that you know they're still allowing us to come in as long as we don't. They're still get, they're going to check our temperature, make us use hand sanitizer. Yes. Um, at, when it first all happened, it was a lot stricter. Uh, but it's loosening up here um, in Austin. And so uh, they're just taking our temp and, you know, letting us make sure we're wearing a, a mask and they're, and they're letting us in. So it has slowed us down a little bit, but. It's really not all that different than what they're requiring patients to do, right? Um, take an example, they walk patients. in or they're waiting in their car in the parking lot and then they're, they're called mm -hmm. back. It's true. Yeah. Um, Dr. Feigenbaum. Uh, asks how have you tried other modes of marketing, uh, uh, Dr. Brandon? Uh, other modes of marketing such as TV, radio, digital for Sleep Better Austin. Yeah, absolutely, we've done uh, mailers, we've done digital marketing, we've done radio marketing, we've done. Um, we have, we have. I don't think we've done any billboards or anything like that. But we've, we've done. About, yeah, yeah, we, we've done. We've done pretty much every avenue out there that you can, you know, think of. Um, between Google AdWords, uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. um, SEO, radio, SEO uh, and, and even some mailing campaigns in print, uh, some print, we've done some newspaper things and stuff like that, yep. um, all with limited um, success. And I, I think what happens 
you know, there's so many steps when you, when you start dealing with mm -hmm. external marketing to patients, there's so many steps, you know? So if you do marketing and you reach a patient directly, the patient calls, well, now we've got to you know, diagnosis. Yeah. You know, have you been diagnosed? One, yeah. when was your sleep test? Two, how long ago was it? Three, yeah. where did you get it? Four, is your doctor going to prescribe an oral appliance? Cause we need a doctor. So many yeah. So now we've got the patient, but there's a lot of legwork that goes into actually getting that patient, getting all the documentation we need to actually get that patient treated. And when you're doing that much legwork, there's a lot of places where patients can fall through the cracks. And so, you know, we never saw a huge return on that kind of marketing. Yes, there's some return. Yes, we do reach patients. But when patients are coming directly from the physician, we have everything they need. They've had their test. They have their diagnosis. We have their prescription. So we're able to get those patients in and moving and going faster. I'll yeah. tell you, I was very disappointed in the radio um, marketing when we, when we did that for a while. It was just, there wasn't a whole lot of return on it. And really expensive. Yeah. And very expensive. Yeah. And it's amazing because we do radio marketing for implants and our, our cosmetic dentistry, and it's huge. Uh, yeah. I mean, we do great with it for, for dentistry. Uh, mm -hmm. but when we did it for sleep, we just, we just didn't see the same amount. And, and then also we're competing, you know, when we do radio marketing, that. we're competing with the ENT, we're competing mm -hmm. with Inspire, we're competing mm -hmm. with the, the CPAP companies, we're competing with, you know, all these other uh, parts of that, that area or that, that industry, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Additional question. Um, Dr. Aliko Farad asked this as well. Can you say more about your screening program? <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't know that the purpose of this webinar is to get into um, the, the screening business. Uh, what I can say is it's a business model that we coach. I, I'm an active coach with the International Academy of Sleep. And uh, that's where that business model is developed. I work with a lot of dentists around the country to implement that in their businesses. And if you have questions about that, I absolutely feel free to reach out to me individually. Yeah, yeah. And this might be one of those questions as well. Also, can you speak about incentives that you provide to Sarah in order to uh, keep her motivated? Yeah, so most salespeople are incentivized by numbers, quotas. Salespeople are used to having quotas. And I think they're very um, financially incentivized by goals and, um, and, and compensation. So, you know, we've, we've got some different things that we do. We've done different things over, over time in terms of numbers of referrals and then numbers of appliances that come from those referrals and hitting certain metrics. And when you hit certain metrics, then there's certain bonuses that come in from that, uh, along with team bonuses. And we, we incentivize all my team. So mm -hmm. you know, we do a, a collections bonus, for example. Uh, we have a monthly collections goal for our business. And every dollar that goes over that goal, we take 15% of and it goes to the team and it gets split up amongst the team. Awesome. Um, and, you know, sometimes we hit it, sometimes we don't, but it keeps everybody focused on what our goals are and, and working to do everything they can to hit those goals. Yeah, and it's a very team uh, teamwork mentality because so some some goals like the the assistance goals are based you know on something that the whole team has to be a part of. Does that make sense? So like you know when whenever I bring it whenever I bring in patients, I'm incentivized if the assistants get the impression. So it's a very very much a, a teamwork um, atmosphere, family. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Guys, we've gone 46 minutes. It was always my intent to go about 45. I'm going to ask one more question from Dr. Uh, Dr. Quay, my good buddy Domingo Quay out there in North Carolina, Dr. Quay, MD, sleep doc. Uh, Dr. Quay asks, which specialty refers the most patients to your practice? Is it primary care? If you, if you took all of our referrals? I'd say ENT. ENT, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's it's probably ENT and then a, a cardiology step, after that. Secondarily to that is probably a cardiology. Mm -hmm. Excellent, guys. Um, 
so let's let's uh, let's let's wrap it up here. I don't want to keep uh, everybody too late on a Friday. I, I do want to just quickly mention that uh, um, our our last scheduled webinar for this series is on Wednesday uh, with Dr. Stacy Lehman, and um, it's phenomenal, by the way. Stacy's one of the most entertaining people you'll ever listen oh, to. So it'll be Dr. A good Lehman's one. the best, yeah. And Lori Ledley, who uh, again is the owner and CEO of a, of a big time. Um, uh, sleep Center there in, in Arizona, Valley Sleep Center. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have them on a Wednesday, 6 p.m. next uh, next next Wednesday. Um, I want to invite the audience. Also, we I have gotten a lot of emails from from sleep dentists around the country. N number one, saying I want to be on the webinar. I've got a great doc, and he and he or she would love to do this. Can I do it? I'd love to do it. And then I've also got emails saying, um, have you thought about bringing this, this partner on with me? I've got a, a unique relationship with this person or that person. Um, if you want to see us do more of these webinars, I'm more than happy to. I love this interaction. Um, I, I'd like to invite you to email me direct, L Myers, that's L-M-E-Y-E-R-S, at somnomed.com. Feel free to email me with your ideas, with your feedback, uh, critical or, or supportive. I'm open to all, all feedback and, and, and it, is, it is welcome. Um, Dr. Hedgecock, Sarah, I cannot thank you guys enough for being on. It is my hope that, uh, that our audience uh, are, are gonna take home something of value from the time we spent together today. You're running an incredible practice there in Austin, helping a lot of people. And, and a lot can be learned from your expertise. And I thank you very, very much. Uh, thank, thank you for having us. Fun and, and easy, time flew. Yeah, yeah it sure. did indeed. Everybody have a fabulous week. What's that, Sarah? I said I could do this all day. Oh, you could? Well, we're, we're gonna have to do it again then. I wanna <laughs> wish all of you guys a fabulous, fabulous weekend. And we are signing off here from the Myers household. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye guys.